watch it from the uh, Cabal Vision. Good to go. What's up, everybody? This is Sirius Jest, and you are joining us for another exciting week of Meat and Mayhem League MML action here. Blood Bowl 2, PS4. We are uh, separated. The MML is the Pro League is split. We have a Pro and a Challenge League. Looking at the Pro League, it's split into uh, four different play pools. The play pools are cons uh, consist of two different conferences, so there's eight conferences in total. The top two in each play pool goes to the playoffs, and we are in week seven. This is when playoffs are decided. The play pool that we're looking at here is the Noble South Conference and the Iron League. We, the conferences rotate uh, based on their division, whether they're east or west, so European versus um, uh, the American continent. And... Uh, Right here, you can see our leaderboard. This is what this play pool looks like. The Necrophilia, the Necromantic team, uh, coached by Coach Hezekiah87, is uh, at, a, at a record of four wins, one draw, one loss. And uh, it looks like Stop Rolling Ones has locked up their playoff, the second playoff berth. And that's a Wood Elf team coached by Reznor. Rules you four wins and no draws and three losses. So what... Could have been a chance for Chase JJ to sneak into the playoffs here with his Norse Solar Savers uh, is a uh, is kind of nil nil opportunity. So this is not does not have playoff implications. But this is what you got to watch out for. Chase JJ is a very violent coach that likes to cause damage even more than he likes to score. So for Necrophilia, this is kind of like a grudge match, I guess. In the in the um, other MML war, the uh, Age of Sigmar war, these two. Coaches Coaches had a face-off where uh, Coach Hezekiah lost a bunch of Saurus and and uh, to, to chase his violent ways and vowed that this match would be bloody. He vowed to infl inflict a bunch of pain. And the Necro the Necro have a very dangerous Strength Five Wolf. Yes, Strength Five Wolf, who I think also has uh, the Mighty Blow skill. So he wants to run them ram run that Wolf Ramshot all over the Norths. We'll see if he's able to today. But Chase with nothing to lose. I mean, well, he's got a he's got a. a Bowl game? No, he'll make the bowl game anyway. So Chase has a bowl game locked up because he'll have a 500 record even with the loss. He really has nothing to lose. So for Necrophilia, the biggest challenge is going to be getting through this game intact and still being healthy for the playoffs. Uh, as a coach that played Chase in Week 7 last season, I know from experience I did get the win uh, substantially by a lot. I think by three by three touchdowns, but yet uh, paid a heavy price and had a lot of injuries going into my bowl game. So uh, let's see what happens today. I'm being told by my co-announcer, Blue Max. What's up, Blue Max? Hi, serious? Uh uh, I understand. I was talking to uh, Hez, and then yeah, this is a grudge match right now. That nice. They're gonna be doing. And I'm and, being told uh, that uh, you you told me that they they're all already on the field, right? They're taking their places on the field. Yeah, they're 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 on the field now. So uh, I'll try to sync it up with you. Okay. Uh, well, it'll be yeah. real easy. My, my uh, so I'm waiting for the uh, the necromancer's uh, uh, crystal ball or whatever to 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 help focus in once it does if we miss the first couple of moments of action i can just back it up really quick and it'll catch up on its own really fast so I, I don't want the crowd to miss any of this exciting action because i chose to be a little too verbose in the beginning um but uh, so what what what's your take on these teams you you said you've you've encountered both of these coaches before right uh the coaches yes these teams no uh but I'm familiar with NARS. The, the NARS are, are good teams on paper, but they're fragile if, if the other team starts pounding on them, you know. And, of course, uh, Hez has got a team that can pound on you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And let's take a look. at So, All right, so we're coming in, and it's turn two here. I'm going to back us up really quick so everybody can catch all yeah, the action. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm backing it. I backed it up to the setup on, on the uh, uh, right. Solus. So, so right what now, our crowd is seeing now is the, the ball has been kicked off. The opening turn one hit uh, was just a push. Another push by St – oh, no, this one's a f uh, steadfast. The other flesh golem comes with the thunderclaps to the ears of Asvalder, who is stunned. You're going to have uh, Ben Diagnosis get repelled. And this is where, you know, having the Norse with the low AV, but all of them have the block skills, so – 
it can be kind of frustrating to a team that is still developing. This is Necrophilia's first. Uh, this is uh, this is the first season in the MML where Norse uh, were available to coach, and two coaches came in and coached them. Two coaches answered that noble call to coach the best race in the game, and uh, Hezekiah eighty seven is one. I am the other uh, with my hopeless uh, Necromantics, and both of us look playoff bound. So I think it's been a successful campaign oh, so yeah. far. The uh, the Wolves. Are uh, key to uh, the success. It's well, funny you say that because right yeah. there we see Ferocious Fang, White Ferocious Fang, lay out Vang Vickson. I'm sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah, and and then uh, of course uh, you know I I played you in in our pool, and right. uh, your ghoul was just really hard to contain. That 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 was the player that made the difference for you. Chasing Poppy, yeah. He's uh, the the ghouls are fragile and, and oh wow! So it looks like the Necro are beating the Foul Master Chase JJ to the punch, and they right away they KO a Norse uh, a Norse player with a with a foul. But yeah, uh, the the ghouls are they're 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 the only the now and Necros don't get a, um they don't get an Apo, right? But every player on the team can regenerate except for the ghouls. But the ghouls Except also can develop a, a very tough skill set to deal with, and uh, mine has uh, a, a plus agility stat up. But also he gets he has some standard skills that the ghouls can pick up, like the blodging and the it's sure hands right. that make them particularly tough to deal with. He might even so have sidestep. The only them. way you take them out is is to uh, you can wrestle them down if you got one of them players, or to do a pile. You know, yeah, that's the only way you're gonna take once them you out. get them, yeah, once you get them down, take advantage of it. But uh, and hit, and wow, another yet another foul. The Necros are not playing around. They have their game plan is to out foul the foul the fouling team. And there's that wolf we were talking about, Blue Max. That guy looks scary. I mean, Sean Michaels on the on the Necromantics on the Hopeless Necromantics is a uh, is a force with his mighty blow pylon and his claw. But this guy, the Agi five. I mean, the strength five. That five, just yeah, ugh. Logan, yeah. And uh, it takes he, he he leaves him out there kind of on an island, and this is dangerous because Chase, again with nothing to lose, would love nothing more than to kill this strength five werewolf. And so he dedicates yeah, the he... forces over there to take a two die block. It is unsuccessful, and I thought thought for a second it was going to be Surf City. Logan Bluefur is the name of that wolf. Scores his initial hit, thinks his dodge skill is going to get him out of there, and it doesn't. He trips go. up. Yeah. And uh, I, he, he trips up right by that dirty player, Blue. Um, oh, really? Oh, the guy that's the, laying down is the dirty player. He's the dirty player. That's uh, That uh, guy has been around for a while, since, since last season. He did some damage against my last season human team, uh, the, the Greendale uh, human beings. Yeah, here it comes. And there's here a surf. Comes. And this is, it's, you know, this takes some no skill, damage. man, because... No damage by the yeah, 30 The crowd, even though this is the, the Solus Saber Stadium and they're a pretty popular team, uh, oh, he does not foul, oh, he does foul him, okay, but with only two players. I actually yeah. thought they were going to dedicate more to getting the assist. So it looks like Chase does want to win this game. It looks like Chase, yeah. you know, it's not just <laughs> come out here and kill him, because just if he did... foul at all costs, yeah, yeah he, it does he, want to... I think and so. we have seen that chase before. Um, oh yeah, I've young seen chase myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Well, and and even I mean, there was a couple. I mean, Chase has been around in the MML now for whew, maybe as far back as season three or two, right? I'm, I'm sure he's been here as long as I've been around. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And I've, I came in in season three. He may be Chase may have been around since season two, maybe three. Um, but Chase, old Chase believed heavily in the attrition game. Chase said, you know what? It's called Blood Bowl for a reason. And yeah, right. there's a football game on, but I'm going to spend my first eight turns just taking as many of your guys off the pitch. And then by the end, you're going to, you're going to have nobody left on the pitch and you're just not going to be able to fight me. And whatever damage you did on the scoreboard, I'll, I'll make up for it. This is tough. Logan Bluefur has been having a tough time, um, connecting with his blocks or causing any damage. But, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't help that the Norse are mostly AV7. So when he hits an AV7 guy, what the claw does is basically turn anybody's armor into AV7. It slices through armor. But if you're already mm. AV7 and you don't wear armor like these mankini-wearing, uh, yeah. you know, bad boys right. here, 
<laughs> yeah, then it's like kind of neutralized. So all he is is basically a big dude that can hit you by himself because he's got strength five and he's very, very mobile. He's also a blodger. He's tough to hit, but there's a lot of tackle on the Solar Saver. So. Mm, yeah. uh, his ghoul. Uh... Yeah, Hez has had enough with waiting Great. in the backfield. He's starting okay. to. He's going to grab a snatcher. Yeah, he's moved up. Yep. He's kind of got a very loose <laughs> protection cage. around him, though. He does. Yeah, not even a cage. <laughs> well, he's not done moving yet. He's still got the, uh, yeah, he's got the other wolf is going to come over. That, that's the, all right, so I was wrong. Logan Blueford doesn't have the mighty blow. He's got another wolf with the mighty blow and claw. So Fang could be is could be the one. This, Logan Blueford is the one a lot of, a lot of the teams are afraid of just because of the high strength, oh, yeah. right? But, Ferocious Fang can do, especially in games like this where it's verse AB7, that Mighty Blow, the Mighty Blow with the Frenzy is going to be especially threatening. I think he might be the star of this game when it's all said and done. And finally, uh -huh. the ref has had enough. And then oh, Hez has a little talk oh, with him. That bribe, huh? Yeah, a little talk with him, a little uh, palm grease uh -huh. and ensues uh -huh. there, and maybe the ref didn't see anything after all. Yeah, what did I say? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Nothing happened. <laughs> Move on, people. <laughs> nothing to see here. Yeah, nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a very, very, very loose cage. Um, actually, he's really he's given up a shot. Oh, oh. starting off with lightning. Yeah. Just took out uh, the strength five. It didn't do any damage, but it's done. Kind of knocked him down there. And, and and this is why. So he was giving up. Hez was giving up the shot without a dodge. It was a free one die block uh, for Mord Sigerson, the lineman, to come over and hit um, to, and hit Gravel Snatcher. But Gravel Snatcher, as you can see, is a blodger and whatever the guy's name is, there comes the doesn't blitz. have the tackle skill. Yeah. But Kelvin, yeah, Kelvin's got frenzy and tackle. And Pylon. So this is the opportunity that Chase has been waiting for. If Gravel Snatcher can survive this, it'll be a big deal. Oh. And wow, he actually oh. they survives the onslaught, wow. and that's got to be frustrating yeah. to Chase. Oh yeah. yeah. You spend you spend like your say, wizard. He's, 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 he's you got use your say, blitz yeah. from your Ulf with the frenzy, and you can't knock him down. That's ouch. It does make you wonder, though, if he was going to spend the lightning bolt, why not just lightning bolt the, the ball carrier? The ball carrier, yeah. And take yeah. the ball. Exactly. Exactly. But he, I guess he hates that uh, uh, <laughs> level. <laughs> he he <laughs> wanted to defend. He, I think he wanted to feed Kelvin. Um, yeah. I don't, this is some questionable playing. But, again, this is – remember, there's no playoff implications, and Solus really has right. nothing to lose other than their team. I think Chase has declared – now, Chase is the last remaining MML Pro um, Norse coach, and he's declared that I th he plans to go Kemri once they're released. And now with yeah. Nefios having recently announced that Kemri's and, and Chaos Dwarfs are in the very near future, this might be Solus's last season. So really, Chase is probably just having fun. And gravel snatcher. Yeah, he's, he's just uh, like your ghoul there. Very hard to bring down. Mm -hmm. Like you said, he could have used the lightning bolt for him. But he, didn't. he probably should have. I wonder if it was a case of overthinking, or he was just like, nah, I just want to feed. I want to feed these ulfs. Uh, I know, yeah. you know, he, he loves these ulfs. Isaac suffered a niggling injury earlier this season. At the very start of the season, he got a smashed knee. Um, but these two ulfs have been like perennial stars and uh, I haven't calculated the league leaders yet for this season I'm going to do that at the conclusion of week seven so make sure if you're watching this by the way do not pull your team out of the competition when this is all done um, even if you're not bringing right. the team back next year because yeah. I'm going to calculate the league leaders at the end of the season but these guys uh, Isaac Mad Magnus Isaac and the other Ulf um, Kelvin for the Solar Savers have been at the top of the charts for violence uh, for the MML for a few a couple seasons now as long as the solar savers have been in the league these guys have been a threat and they just keep getting meaner and meaner if you look at those stats with the piling on and the tackle and the frenzy these guys are real problems and there's I know, the, I know that there was talk yeah you know, someone sent that yep there you go this time there's a the ref there, goes there to was, uh, 
just as I said that, uh, there was talk in the league about who had the record for the most send-offs. <laughs> there is. It's currently three. Uh, current through. I, I haven't looked at the week six stuff yet. I have to catch up on week six. Ooh, and there's uh, Kura the Demon Hunter. Conrad the Demon Hunter is badly hurt Andrew. and does not regenerate. We will not see him again for the rest of the game, but uh, he'll be back for the playoffs. Playoffs. And Whiskey Foxtrot giving it to Amy Winehouse. <laughs> uh, at halftime, I got a guest player that's going to make a visit. Oh, nice. To the Good stuff. And there, now we're going to see the other Ulf. So Kelvin couldn't get it done. But Mad Magnus Isaac does get it done in a deafening fashion. Gravel Snatcher stunned, and the ball, did the ball pop into, wait a minute, what just, how did that, how does that, wait, so the ball popped out, and I guess he piled on before he knew where the ball was going to go. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. yeah, he decided to pull on it, uh, get, he didn't get a chance to uh, really see the result. I just, these, bo both of these coaches, I'm, I'm a little confused here. Uh, um, both of these coaches are very, very competent. Um, so it is out of character for Chase to lightning bolt, not the ball carrier, and then hit the ball carrier and do do that long work around. It's like watching somebody, you know, create one of those weird contraptions to open a beer. That oh, wait a minute! White Fang is injured. Fang is badly hurt. Okay, so we may not see him again for this game, and I I'm not sure if, if has really yet. He we're not going to see him again for this game. He does not regenerate. So he now Logan Bluefur is on, her, on his own. That's going to hurt in terms of he's not going to be able to cause the damage that he wanted him to cause. But honestly, in a game like this, with everything to lose and nothing to really gain for the necrophilia, um, it's probably better that those two players are safely gone. <laughs> they're going to see the playoffs. They're gonna, at least he has one wolf that's definitely coming out of this, um, you know, not with a, an injury. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's it's weird because it's like these guys are playing in a almost haphazard fashion. Blue for slips, and he's stunned. Seeing stars. They're like, you know, Hez normally would break up that wide zone and would never, he would properly screen so you'd never be able to get to that ball carrier. But he left it open for Chase to pretty easily get to him with that Ulf. Um, it's just, mm. it's almost like these two are just kind of, just, this is a street fight well, kind of, and they're just having fun with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, street fight is an emotional battle here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like doing stuff like piling on with the Ulf instead of instead of going, like putting them, placing them to mark wherever the ball is. Like that's just not, that to me is not somebody who's really trying to win the game. He's trying to make a statement and, and do fun stuff. And those games are great. Don't get me wrong, but l let's not forget, one coach has a lot to lose. One coach has to play the playoffs after this. The other coach may never coach this team again in the pros. Right. So, if your coach has, you got to be really careful. And look at this. Look at this. Mad Magnus Isaac says, screw those, uh, screw my hands, team. I'm going to do this yeah. myself. I'm going to pick up that ball like a boss. Reckless abandon. I mean, you saw when he went to pick it up, he even placed himself. Had he failed that pickup and that was a turnover, he would he would have left himself in surfing range. And his buddy Whiskey Foxtrot just to come over to provide some extra support. Uh, slips at oh, first. Oh, he's, foul. he's not coming Ooh. for support. He's coming to foul. Foul, that was, coming to foul. Oh, that wasn't Whiskey Foxtrot, was it? It was uh, Regin Cotlet. It's a dirty player. It's almost yeah. like these guys dirty, just don't care about the ball. Dirty players busy. <laughs> and now the question becomes, can... Yeah, I don't think the Necro are going to score at this rate. I mean, taking down that huge uh, Ulf is going to be tough. And it's... Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna have to, it's going to have to be a red die block. And then for the Norse, I mean, we're gonna, we might actually have to see... Uh, yeah, we're going to have to see a... Uh, some kind of uh, unlikely play for a touchdown to happen the other way, though. Well, here comes the block. Red die block. Red die block. No rerolls. Yeah, no so re that's, that's happening. 
And Gravel Snatch is knocked out. He's lucky it wasn't worse. Yeah. For those of you in the chat, by the way. Oh, by the way, I want to give a shout out to uh, Thunden. I guess his, his game is over now. Uh, there was a concurrent game. The Green Tide Titans were playing for their playoff hopes. Um, they were playing. It was Orca Geddon. They were going up against uh, Yate Yobbs. And uh, so we got Harry Warthog in the chat. Thunden's in the chat. <laughs> Thunden calling for foul, foul. And uh, this is an entertaining game. This is not the best strategic and safe play that I've seen by either coach. Um, you know, I expected kind of Chase to come in here with reckless abandon, but it it seems like Hez can't resist but rolling up his sleeves and mixing it up with him. And uh, we've just yeah. seen this has been just a straight up fight. There's a ball on the field. I think there's a ball on the field somewhere. Oh yeah, the big mean Wolf has got it. And it's funny because Chase isn't even trying to score. No, he, he's going out for blood. <laughs> he hasn't even. I mean, he, there are there is a man in scoring range. Yeah, there he, is. He had another guy. He could have handed off with to the Ulf. Yeah, he could have. He could have done what he's doing right now. He could have blitzed that guy free. He could have taken the Ulf, handed but it off to one of down. those Norse guys. Yeah, there he is. Yep, and then and then passed it to this player for the TD. But Chase ain't concerned with all that. Chase wants to kick ass. That's all he's been doing. <laughs> it's it's crazy. like he's saying goodbye to the team. This is the farewell pound. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, congratulations to Thunden on the victory. Um, it is a mess over in the DVC play pool, uh, the uh, Death yeah. Valley Conference. I, I, uh, I want to say, who is there? I think it's Death Valley and the uh, SCC, which is the uh, Sword Coast Conference. So those two are in a play pool, and... Uh, the Green Tide Titans are in fifth place and yet are one of five teams that could go to the playoffs depending on who wins and loses. Uh, really soon, we're probably going to be starting to uh, see a Power Hour face off against Los Pumas. Power Hour needs a win, I think, to stay in playoff contention. Or at the very least, a tie. So, I don't know. It's a huge mess out there. If you, if you get the chance, check out MMLPro.com. Um, Coach Hez, actually, who's coaching the Necrophilia right now, um, right, has written a bunch of articles for every play pool, and you can see kind of like the breakdown of what needs to happen. So he was able to say, hey, if this team wins, if this team loses, this is what happens. For that play pool, it was, it, it was just, he just posted a picture of an algebra equation, like out of Goodwill Hunting. So, <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know whether the Green Tide Titans still have a shot to get in. I don't, I don't think the other games have been played yet. So they've done their part. They won their game, and depending on the other, the other teams, we'll see whether they get in or not. But congratulations to Thunden for winning his his match. It looks like his troll, who he's been saying for seasons now, he's gonna fire that guy. Uh, but Mo just keeps hanging around, Big Mo, and apparently he died again today and regenerated. So you can't kill him. You can't fire him. He won't go away. He's like uh, he's like one of those uh, cold sores that keeps showing up on uh, on somebody's lip, <laughs> and, you're, and you're like, what is that? And they go, oh, it's just a cold sore. You're like, that cold sore keeps coming back in the same spot. I don't believe you. But I digress. <laughs> oh, uh, wow. Harry says the algebra one was for the WAC conference, was it? Okay, so okay, you know he did, he did, he did the breakdown. That's right, he did the breakdown on this one. This one is it, surprisingly, this one is it's bad when this one is the less complicated play pool where the fifth place can still make it and then there's one that's even more complicated than that so the ball kicked off the uh the norse look at it bounce they say i don't want that ball i'm not even trying to catch that ball and the ball bounces back over to the necro side the ref says oh that's a touchback you guys you guys can take the ball and all right fine i guess give it to harold harold's the guy that handles the ball in the meantime I kelvin's gonna go back to I kicking ass yes coming What the hell was our that? Guest. <laughs> our guest. Our guest. Is our, who's our guest? From the, the a Aztec gold is Montezuma, <laughs> the Crocs. Oh, snap. Yeah, that guy's hi. a force. Hi, Montezuma. <laughs> <laughs> How you enjoying the game, Montezuma? Oh, I, I just missed the first half. I had to stop by and eat me a few halflings. <laughs> wow. That sounds uh, appetizing, I guess. How did they oh, taste? Yeah, uh, like chicken. <laughs> wow. 
why not? <laughs> that must be good then. <laughs> and uh, and we are actually gonna see. Wait, are we seeing the ball move up to, to the half? It sounds. It, it looks. It looks like the Norse are pretending to care about the ball. This wait. No, yeah, you know, they're, they're actually building a cage. Oh, yeah, I thought for a second, for a second, I thought Chase <laughs> was going to give a nod to another uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, Norse coach who I really already miss. I had to leave uh, for personal reasons, the MML, for a little while, but he might be coming back in the future. Uh, coach Shadow Webster, uh, who invented the famed Norse T. And for a second, I thought we were going to see the Norse T formation, which instead of the cage, kind of comes over here. And This is like a Norse gun. If you look at it, there's the trigger. And wait, while I've been talking, Calvin gets a little it's back talk from Logan Bluefur. He said, you know what? Uh -oh. You've been getting, you've been doing a lot of damage over here, and I don't like it. There's a new sheriff in town. I'm the big guy. I'm the alpha dog. Back up, son. Get out of the game. And that's what he does. Kelvin is done. Kelvin's been having kind of, a, kind of an off game anyway. Oh, I've been looking at the wrong sideline. Kelvin's done for the, for the match. Or is he? No, he's not done for the match. What the hell? Did he apo him? Yeah, he appoed him. That's why. Yeah, so he Calvin appoed him. Be, yeah. Be coming back then. Hey, Montezuma, how do how do rats taste? Uh, they taste like beast men. <laughs> A little gamey. You better keep this guy fed, man. I don't want him chewing on my shoulder or something while we're. <laughs> I, I swear, Montezuma. Talking about bones. <laughs> I got one to pick with serious. Uh oh, why? What did you, I do? You and you announced one of our games, and you were chewing up the names of our players. <laughs> our players are named after Aztec gods. I do, I do respect the Aztec gods, although I prefer the Incan uh, ones. But the, yeah, but yeah. I, I I hear that you're you're from Peru, so I assume you would have. I know about that kind of stuff. I do, I do. It's just uh, the generic, the generic names. I just feel like your coach could have hooked you up with some more specific or creative names instead of just taking the names that the game gave you. <laughs> no, these were chosen by for the Aztec gods. These weren't, except uh, for that moon, there. that moon guy. He he was chosen by the game. <laughs> And by the way, while we're while we're sitting over here chatting, Mad Magnus Isaac is pissed off that Kelvin is that they tried to make a move on Kelvin and injure him. He comes over and takes a shot at Logan Bluefur. Tries to show, hey Logan, I'm the man. I'm the man. Yeah, well, me with the help of my two friends. And Logan says, even with your puny friends, you can't do no damage. Get off me. And it looks like the Norse are about to make a move up that wide zone. About and to do a, a right sweep here, maybe. Yeah. This is weird. This went from like a street with fight. Harold. To an actual attempt to win, which is kind of not fair. <laughs> after after what I witnessed, Chase came out here and baited Hez into a into a fight. He baited him into uh, like, hey, we're gonna slug it out, forget the ball, and then he switched it up on him, and he's like using positioning and strategy now. That's not right. And uh, shout out to Rez, who is in the chat, oh. saying this play pool is already decided. Yes, as I said in the, uh, I, I brought us in on the intro, I noted that uh, congratulations to Stop Rolling Ones, who took a break so that um, so that the Hez's Undead team could elf too. Um, but Stop Rolling Ones, the former challenge, the first MML Challenge League champs, um, it were uh, it returned and, and have made the playoffs, I think, for the first time. So Hez going for that double chip. The Challenge League um, Championship, as, and then following it up with the Pro Championship with one team. That's never been done before, so it'll be interesting if that happens. Stop Rolling Ones is the uh, the other team that has made the playoffs in this play pool, along with Necrophilia. By the way, uh, my team will be coming back. I expect gold. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. You have to, man. We we got a good play pool going on. Your uh, Aztec Gold is in the is in our conference, the first four. So with the Princes of Arioch, um, Hopeless Necromantics, Aztec Gold, and uh, Stuff and Junk's Repulsive Rattlings, we have a tough tough conference. Very tough. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it looks like. <laughs> now it just looks like the Necro are kind of unconcerned. This is what I expected out of Chase, but it looks like, like Hez is 
he wasn't he wasn't Just kidding around. Ignore the ball carrier and this beat up on as many players as you can. He threatened Chase all week with inflicted that he was gonna break his players, he was gonna inflict damage. And um he, I thought he was kidding. I thought that that was just hype, smack talk to build up the match. And I thought that Hez really was going to come in here winning or uh, trying to win. Um, but it looks like he just has no interest in the ball. He is going out. Yeah. And, and now. He hasn't, he hasn't taken anybody out either. You know, the thing. Yeah, Blue, it looks like uh, oh, Chase may have baited him here. It, because if he can knock away that white. Okay, no, no, no. Chase wants to win. I thought for a second there, if he could knock away the white, there was going to be a, fi a foul on Logan Bluefer. But Chase is, uh, he's set on this touchdown. This is so unusual. And uh, Harry Warthog won his match. Who, uh, who did you play today, Harry? If, uh, if you could answer in the chat. But uh, I like the Thugs, man. The, uh, Harry's uh, Chaos Team the Thugs has been around since Season 2. The Thugs are well, Drake. A bunch of great guys uh, like to horse around in the locker room. they got some articles written about them as well um, on MMLPro.com. Definitely check them out. Harry's an awesome guy. Great announcer as well. Um, and he's a good, very great, great writer, too. I, I like reading his stories. And I hope they, they continue. And I hope that if he... Does if the thugs don't get relegated? By the way, relegation is in effect this season for the first time in the MML. The bottom two teams are going to be relegated to the Challenge League, um, and the top two teams in the Challenge League, meaning the winner of the whole shebang, the championship winner, and his opponent in the finals, are going to get the opportunity to move up to the pros. Um, what Harry said was, I think he said in the past, is if he does not um, get to I mean, I'm sorry, if he, if he gets relegated and he goes down to the Challenge League, then he might as well just switch it up and take Nurgle, play a Nurgle team. Take so, Nurgle, huh? Yeah. yeah, Harry's been flirting with a Nurgle team over there. Scalabera knocked out. Logan Bluefur is finally starting to show some muscle. Again, he just has not been doing a lot of damage here. Uh, the Ulfs have kind of been stealing all his thunder. And now he's going to mark up the ball carrier. So now, I don't know, it's like they're playing, the Necro are playing weird like they... They want to stop the score. They don't want to stop the score. They're not really sure. <laughs> Chase still has two re-rolls. And, oh, they're going to foul this Yeti well, that, yeah, again. Yeah, gone. Yeti's gone. Yep, and now, I mean, I guess the question is, do the rest of these guys... Nope, they don't. So the zombies are now going to flood the scene and make a feigned attempt to actually care <laughs> about scoring. Um, and the thing is, though, if if the Norse, I mean, the, it's not it's not a horrible it's not, at zero zero. If you're trying to win, it's not a good idea to let the other side score. But if they are going to score. You let them score early like this, right? Um, he's got a body on him. Chase can score right now. If he does, though, you've got one, two, three, four turns left for the Necro to come back, and he is going to score. He's going yeah. in. We have our first score. The Mankini rules. Spike by Harold Snorrison. <laughs> Snorrison. And there's nothing sleepy or snorry about this. We have our first touchdown, yeah. and he's showing off the muscles that he works so hard to develop in the gym. Before so, I leave, I, I am going to send out a warning. I'm coming back with a vengeance next season. Yeah, we almost... And see. any... Any... Guy that pile drives any of my skinks is going to pay for it. <laughs> Sean Michaels kind of, kind of got a, a little, a uh, little out of hand that game, um, and we, we, we snuck away with one. I, I got to hand it to you. Your team was uh, definitely gave us a little bit of the business that game. I, I didn't think it was good. We were going to scrape away that victory for a little while. All right, thanks, Montezuma. I'll see you next season. Enjoy the off season. See you, Montezuma. All right. Goodbye. Good luck in the playoff series. Thank you. Thank you.
that is just that noise is hard stopping right there when that happens. <laughs> I wish you guys could be here in the booth shaking as he's leaving. Well, it looks like he stepped up on the ushers. <laughs> Yikes. He's a and, scary guy. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Uh, I'm going to start picking up some of these uh, things that have fallen around here from when he when he entered. Yeah, he just kind of knocked everything over with that tail. And speaking of knocking stuff, uh, the the ball is kicked high into the air. Uh, both teams again, just because of the uh, immense, immensely great job that they've done coaching. Uh, you're going to see their players kind of uh, be able to overcome some slip-ups later, a little, a couple extra slip-ups. And uh, Logan Bluefer starts off by injuring Harold Snorrison. Whoa. Badly hurt. No long term. Yeah. So he's, you're going to see him off the pitch. And, and Logan yeah, just Hez, jumps back. Yeah, has got five guys over in the, the uh, well, three in the injury box. One, one was actually sent off for a penalty, and then one in a knockout box. Oh, there's another thunderclap. I like that move, man. Mm -hmm. And Guga, Guga Hoot the Handsome with the thunderclaps <laughs> of the ears of Mjord Sigerson. And Whiskey Foxtrot is going to skillfully evade a hit from Boris Kane. Yeah. And here comes the bash on the Yeti unsuccessful they just managed to push him back he looks annoyed arachnus lord of spiders thrown back by bob steadfast and we're gonna get a two die block on craven on scalabera from craven heart and there goes scalabera the guard lineman uh it's t guard uh, linemen don't normally have access to the strength skills so having a guard lineman is uh is a really good thing for the norths all right, no problem picking it up. There's a little light. It's Ulrich the Duster. And it's just been, if you're just tuning in, this has just been a surprising match, just the way it's been played out. Um, You would think that the Sola Savers who had nothing to lose would come in and be the ones just completely concerned about beating the hell out of the Necro. And uh, instead, they're... They're the ones actually running offensive plays and jumping back into, you know, real defensive formations. While real defense, yes. <laughs> yeah, the Necro have been just <laughs> mostly concerned with hunting down players and doing damage to them. You know, but all of that said, the, I think the, the team that's taken the worst of the beating is the Necros. Yeah, uh, yeah. Arachnus Lord of Spiders able to put down Boris Kane, but this is not a good spot for him to end up. He's sitting right next to Bob Steadfast. And, hey, yeah, uh, and he'll probably get someone to assist on get on him. Yeah, and, and it's bad because the rest of his team has kind of just left him to sit there and fend for himself. Uh, yeah. I, my prediction is you're going to see him quickly get surrounded. He's going to get knocked to the ground and fouled. Because, again, I, I don't think Hens is feeling any pressure to move that ball and score. Yeah. He's still got, yeah, he's got, uh, other than this turn, he's got three other turns he can get down to that end zone. I think this is the first season the MML is actually seeding its playoffs. So the uh, one and two spots are going to be put in a position where they, you know, they don't play each other until... Uh, you know, until later on in the, in the playoffs. So I want to say that, you know, they could end up, I think the way, and and actually, uh, I see that the godfather of the MML, Preach, uh, is in the chat, although Tiger recently came, he's the godfather, but uh, Preach is in the chat, <laughs> our commissioner, and uh, I, I think the way it works, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I looked at it, is uh, the one and two are going to be in position so they don't play each other until the finals, right? And, uh, or it's just the, the top person from each. I, I forgot how it's getting seeded. I think that the East yeah. and West are seeded so that they play each other. Different, uh, I'll have to look it up, man, while we go on. But basically, yeah, there's seeding give, going on. Does it give the uh, commissioner the ability to actually set up the whole chain of uh, playoffs? No, we kind of. So, Cyanide hasn't added those features yet to the league management, so yeah. we kind of have to. 
create different competitions, um, okay. which are all, you know, the website will reflect it as all one competition in the playoffs, but for, you okay. know, so you just send a, a ticket for two, two, uh, two, two different matchups, competitions, so. right? But yeah. it, it comes out okay. to the same thing. It's just a little more administrative work on our end. And look at that. Steadfast yeah. tries to come over and lay a block uh, far away and uh, unable to get very far before he's knocked down by this journeyman who will now go down in Norse history uh, as you know a guy that finally got his shot. This is like the Rudy of the Norse. He finally got his shot to come on here playing <laughs> yeah. in, a real, in a real MML pro match and uh, in his first <laughs> game manages to fell a golem. Or just knock him to the ground, but I'm sure his grandkids yeah. will hear about this. For the people that don't know about the Rudy deal, is it is a player for the college Notre Dame who just sat on the bench all year and <laughs> finally was put into the last game of the uh, the uh, team, you know, the last game. He was played by Sean Austin back in a movie <laughs> a while back. <laughs> I'm showing my age that that's uh, I remember that. Yeah, movie. that's it. showing your age. <laughs> and look at it that. It was a good Spend movie, the... though. It was a good it movie. It was. It's a good movie. And Isaac doing damage on Blue Fern. Are we going to see the pylon? Of course oh, we're going to yes. see the pylon. There's the pylon. And Bluefur's dead. dead! Oh my Logan god! Logan is dead, ladies and gentlemen. What the hell? This is not what has wanted to happen. And whoo! The stadium oh, went silent. He regenerated. Yeah, I know. He's back. They, they all held their breath until they get on the sideline, and then he regenerated. <laughs> and if that is not a sobering occurrence for Hez, if that is not a sign that maybe he stop, he needs to stop mixing it up with these Norse. Before the playoffs start, I don't know what is, but man, yeah, that, to, that would definitely that. have been a, a big loss for him going into the playoffs. <laughs> you want to talk about man? Let's uh, let's take a look at that dice log. That's scary. On the regeneration, man, he was one number away. He needed a four plus to regenerate. He got a four. One less. We would have seen the end of his strength five werewolf, which would have changed the makeup of this team. And since this is the last game of the season, it might have been hard for him to replace him with anything. I don't know how much money he's got in the bank. Yeah. Wow. And now you're going to see, now it looks like, yeah. <laughs> Ulrich's making a break for that, for that end yeah, zone. He's, <laughs> he's like, all right, enough of this playing around. Stuff. I, you know, at this point though, your uh, your most susceptible players are off the field. But don't think that these uh, these Ulfs can't still take out this flesh golem. Still, he's not. I yeah, mean, this is he almost a potato. Oh, there's the foul there on the Yeti. And just unsuccessful with the yeah. foul. I still, you know, this is still kind of a, uh, there is not a lot of protection on this ball carrier. No. Uh -huh. And that's what I was getting at. It's like, you know, we're seeding playoffs this year. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Is it like, Hez just has no inclination to win this game. I don't know if he's kind of already calculated who he might play if he wins. <laughs> I don't know if that's Maybe. part of it. I don't know if that's possible right now. <laughs> but, uh, all right, now we're seeing, uh, we're going to see this flesh golem take a hit. A lick from Kelvin. And here comes oh, the boom. He does take him down. It's not even Kelvin. It's Whiskey Foxtrot that gets him to the ground with the mighty blow. And, now and that's going to leave quick. the ball open. Here comes Kelvin. And, oh, and Ulrich down. goes down. He's not hurt. The ball dumps. Wait, he's trying to he's trying to figure out whether he's going to pile on. Decides not to pile okay. on this time. Chase does want to win this match. One of these coaches wants to win. And All right. so, who's going to pick up the ball? That's the question. <laughs> this is looking dire for the Necro. This is, wow. 
I did not expect to see the match go this way. I just, and it's not because I didn't think it was going to be a good match. I think both coaches are good. Again, I think uh, Chase, you know, Chase is uh, has gotten a bad rap for being a fowler and and only caring about destroying people's teams. But he's actually, I mean, he's developed into an awesome coach. Uh, his positioning is great, and he fouls when he needs to. Um, and it, actually, these are, these guys coach very similar. Uh, but I just, I, it's almost like for this match, Coach Hez came out as old Chase, and Chase came out as as old Coach Hez. <laughs> Fractured skull there oh, on Asvalder, and that's going to be a permanent uh, downgrade. That's, yeah, armor so, value. Oh, it, yeah. It becomes almost like a thrill right there. It's almost like he's not even wearing a mankini now. What little protection yeah, it provided is gone. <laughs> You got a little patty cake going on over there from Mord Sigerson and Guggenhoot the Handsome. I like that name. That's hilarious. <laughs> Guggenhoot the Handsome. I don't, this is uh, that is tricky as hell now. Let's see what he's been doing. Yeah, this, this, you don't have anybody in scoring position, so this is just. Okay, so so uh, by the way, I looked up the rules in the MML two point rule two point three of the rules and regulations, which again can be can be found on the uh, on the site mmlpro.com. This, the playoffs are just going to be seeded, like take all the teams, east west, group them all in, figure out where they stand, put them all like in in order of uh, points, um, uh, yeah, you know, wins losses point. and all that stuff, right? And then you're going to seed them. Obviously, you're going to make the number one team. The top number one and the number two team are the east and west top ones, regardless of whether seeds, there's top seeds, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. So even if there's a the number two team in the east is above the number two one team in the west, well, which wouldn't happen, but um, even if that's the case, it would still be the number one west and number one east or one and two, and then everybody else just gets seated as normal, and then we get matched up like that. Number one plays against number eight, and number two plays against number seven, like that kind of deal. So, turn 16, and uh, the ball's laying there, and I don't think Necro are even in a position to score. No, they're not even in a position. That's uh, being able to free, free up the ult uh, and allowing them to blitz was all the difference in, in stopping them. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean they, the only way they can – the Necro could – Potentially score with a chain, a double, two chain pushes, but I. Mm, mm, mm. I, I just don't see it. The attacker has an assist. No, and they don't care. They obviously don't care, and uh, the single die block by the uh, zombie fails, and uh, I don't know if the uh, the bookies are uh, are <laughs> are have are liquid. But they're going to be paying out a lot today. I don't think anybody saw this one ending one to nothing, like this, and, and it playing out the way it did. And only the, the ref just decided to take the day off, man. I mean, these guys definitely there were enough fouls in the game. Well, all by necrophilia, uh, or mostly by necrophilia. I don't remember too many soulless fouls, maybe one or two, but um, only one expulsion on each side. So you fouled twice. Right? That's Coach Chase we got in the chat, and Coach Hez just joined us in the chat. Let's uh, let, let's uh, g get a little something from Coach Chase first. Uh, uh, a moral victory here. Solar Savers came out against the Necrophilia has been threatening you all week, saying they're coming for you, they're gunning for you, they're going to put you down, they're going to ruin your playoff hopes. Um, unfortunately, before the match, the, the playoffs were already decided. You guys couldn't make it. Um, but the Solar Savers still came in here and played for the victory. You, I mean, you might as well have still had the playoffs on the line the way your guys came out and really tried to win this one. Congratulations. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah. uh, I gotta say that went much, much better than expected. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, you were very restrained. You like uh, we were we were commenting Solar Savers. If if uh, if Kemri comes out, if if Kemri makes its appearance before season seven. Are you still are you you intend to go Kemri? Is that your current intention? Nope. Season seven is Solus' last ride right now. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so you'll be around. I want a season to build up. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense. 
and uh, and the Sabers are making a bowl game. They knew they were they were a lock for a bowl game running in here, but this was a, a great way for them to uh, you know to kind of solidify you know, their, their 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 place of finished finished the regular season. It was a really nice way to go. Were you surprised by anything of your opponent's tactics? Um, I'm kind of surprised that my team is still alive. <laughs> I was expecting them to die, but other than that, no, not really. Came at you very aggressively, right? Yeah, but some lucky injuries and lucky regenless regen saved me. Yeah. Why, um, quick question, the lightning bolt, um, when you, you chose to hit the guy that was in the way to get to the ghoul, why not just lightning bolt the ghoul who was harder to bring down and then hit the guy that was blocking your way to the ball? Because I have nothing, didn't have anything to play for this game, so I was going to do the fun thing instead of the smart thing. Gotcha. And two, if I'd broken armor and gotten him off the pitch, and I'd gotten the ghoul down, it would have been, would have looked very smart. So. Yeah, but remember, lightning, lightning is the equivalent. It's a mighty blow. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and just so you know, I think, and you you're gonna have to check this for yourself. So don't quote me on this. But if you go on the on the official Blood Bowl forums, forum.bloodbowl-game.com. Yeah, I know what it is. I check yeah, it occasionally. There's a technical um, there's a technical folder, right? And in there, they got a list of all the glitches. I think, if I remember correctly, that the when you use a wizard, one of the quote unquote glitches is that Mighty Blow applies on the uh, well, yeah, it applies on the on the injury. As well as like it's in a way it's 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 uh, more powerful and than the it's uh, to be. armor and injury. Huh? Yeah, I didn't it, know that. Yeah, it applies on the armor break and the injury. That's what it is. Yep. So um so yeah so anyway just just for for your consideration but yeah I, I figured you were you were going you guys were just having fun because uh, going to Coach Hez how you doing Hez? Um. The uh, ambulance is on their way over to check me for my heart attack. <laughs> yeah, well, that, 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 that uh, werewolf went down, everybody just hushed. <laughs> it seemed to us, and I don't know if you, if this is true, but it seemed to us like your guys were just playing just to have fun. I mean, you were doing things that, like, they were just kind of, like, focusing on kicking ass more than trying to win the game. And uh, it was all fun and games up until that moment. <laughs> When uh when we almost lost Logan Bluefer, is that yeah, a correct assessment? I, mean, I was trying to to win the game. Like I wasn't trying not to. I was making some plays because I wanted to do some damage in the process, and then the strategy just kind of fell apart as we went along. So it made it harder and harder to come back from. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. It was, yeah. it was almost like we, we like you guys had switched roles from what I thought, right? Necro, yeah. Necrophilia had everything to lose in this game in terms of, you know, you you go into the playoffs missing guys or something like that. You know, if you had lost Bluefur, yeah. that would have been completely potentially changed your playoff run, right? And meanwhile, Solar Sabers could have just came in here and did what you did. Like, it seemed like there was a, a dedication to the attrition from you in a way that we used to see from Chase. And it seemed like Chase was the, was the, uh, you know, careful, you know, not to overdo it guy. <laughs> he was the strategic one and you were just in there kicking ass. I mean, it was going for the throat. And, uh, when, when you take that strategy on the AV7, it can be, it can pay big dividends, but when it doesn't, you're kind of like, Oh, you're left holding a bag there. And that sounds yeah. like, like what it, happened. Yeah. There. Once Logan went down, I was kind of like, I yeah, I just want yeah, to get out of here. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's like I'll take the loss. We go in the playoffs. Like at that point, I was still thinking maybe we can get a tie, and it'll be fine. And then once Logan went down, I was like, well, no, not anymore. Like I just don't want to get hurt anymore. I just want to be done. I just want this to be over. Yeah, yeah. And, and I gotta say, there seemed to be, despite there was a lot of trash talking between you guys during the week, uh, more so you threatening Chase, and Chase is kind of yeah. trying to laugh it off. Um, but there seems to be a lot of respect, uh, at least for Chase coming your way in not, you know, I think Chase two seasons ago, I would have expected to make it the point to ruin your playoffs by going after your players, you know, in a vicious way. And he, he really didn't. 
when he could have on several occasions, which I, I, I thought was kind of cool, you know, sportsmanship-wise. Well, yeah, Chase is a good guy. We played earlier last week, and he beat me up pretty bad, so I think he was feeling bad about that. And then, uh, <laughs> and that was then, a fun uh, game. Shots yeah. uh, might have slipped me some money to make sure you were out <laughs> for the rest of the oh, oh, okay. <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, and then um, – we were talking, and I told Chase, you know, before the game, hey, I'm just talking up trash, you know. We're just trying to promote the game. It's not a big deal. He knows I wasn't really mad at him or anything like that, but it's fun. I mean, it, it was fun either way. Um, everybody got yeah, it was a fun game. entertaining uh, to see, the, as Thunden calls him, the unkillable werewolf get killed and then come back to life. So Yeah, Oof, he dodged the bullet there, man. So that's good, man. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing the uh, our Necro brothers in the playoffs. Necro with a pretty successful first season, huh? People thought yeah. we were just going to be, uh, you know. Two for build... two, 100% of the teams made the playoffs. Exactly. People thought we were just going to be like a, uh, you know, kind of, yeah, oh, it's a new team. They're just going to try to build up this season and then maybe make a, a bowl game the next one. And look at that. But now they're a serious threat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you guys' teams, I'm pretty sure you skipped the first two steps of that. <laughs> yeah, we were we were we were fortunate in the in the farm and in the transfer market. I'd say so. <laughs> a little bit hard to uh, really build up from the start. <laughs> True, it's a good point. But um, all right, well, uh, any any other comments from uh, anything from you, Blue Max? No, it's 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 gonna be a good playoff. I I, I just played a couple of the teams. You know, you can play some necrophilia. Uh, not Necrophil, I mean uh, your uh, Necromanics and and uh, the uh, Elf team who seated number one right now. Yeah, the know. Princess of Ariok. And, and uh, the I'll thing let is, let that match is, get away, man. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're kind of tricky, but they're not as strong as some Elf team, high Elf teams I've seen. You know. No, it's their coach but, really that makes them so dangerous. Yeah. yeah. He outfouled me the one time we played in the pros. Oh, Sasser will foul the hell out of you. Don't don't get it twisted. Yes. Sasser is known for his like, he's known for his positioning and his you know his doing all the the fun elfy stuff. Where you're like, oh, I didn't see that you could leap there and chain push somebody there. Like he'll do all that stuff. But Sasser will foul you at least twice a game, and it they won't be like like desperation fouls. They'll be cold and calculated. Will he'll surround you with eight you know eight elves and foul and stomp on your neck. <laughs> kill your best player and he'll yeah, he'll he'll have set it up from two turns ago yeah five fouls to two fouls and i ended the game with a down in numbers and still draw so yeah i mean it's a he's a, if you can draw with sasser that's still a good result um very very good coach and we, so we, we had, had a lot of we had here. we had two deaths in the mml today that were brought back by region is that correct what was Big the other one? Oh, Big Mo, Big right. Mo. Right, right, right. Big Mo, yeah, someone mentioned Big Mo. Yeah, I'm sure it must have been a little frustrating, Hez, to have your first two regions fail, especially on important guys like that. But they were, you know, and then I bet I bet you in retrospect, though, you got away. The badly hurt ones just stayed badly hurt, and then the one you really needed the region for worked out for yeah. you. I was fine with that when it's all said and done. Yeah. All said and done, man, you're in the playoffs in the number one spot in your play pool. Or are, are you going to finish number one, or does does Rez jump up to number one now with your no, loss? No, he's number no. one. I'm number yeah. one. The reason Rez is ahead of me is he nuffled me in week four. So, uh, well, so uh, so all in all, I mean, this is a it was a fun match. You guys obviously had fun playing it, and uh, it was entertaining to watch. And you, you're still coming out intact. Necrophilia is going to come out intact for the playoffs. So, yep. you know, the loss doesn't really hurt I you think, too bad. Yeah, I think it was fun. Um, I think we only had uh, only one stat down, like only one permanent injury. Uh, was uh, it was on a unleveled lino. Yeah, uh, unleveled lineman for Chase. So there was a lot of action. We Both both our teams looked pretty good. So I'm pleased. Um, I'm, I'm glad Chase played me. He's a good opponent. And uh, am looking forward to the rematch next year in the Noble South Conference. I'm glad that Solus uh, is going to be back for another season. I like They're a very entertaining team to watch. Yes, because now the necrophilia need their revenge, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, what's the thing with Amy Winehouse, by the way? Is that a, is that a transfer from, like, is that a, 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 a zombie that you made from another team, or you, you 
Yeah, that is. I can't remember what team I actually got her from. It's like I think it was like my first zombie. Actually, I got two zombies early on in the creation of this team. I killed two people in like the first three games. Nice. One of them was a guard. One of them was a guard zombie that the gingerbread boys killed, and the other one was Amy Winehouse. Ah, uh, gotcha. Well, good stuff. Anything else on you, Blue Max? No, that's it. It's uh, it was a. Good, entertaining game. Uh, it, Definitely. Like you said, it didn't have the implications of really on the playoffs, but uh, it's a preview of what both of these coaches are going to do. So we're going to see heads in the in the uh, playoffs, and we're going to see uh, Chase continue on for a bowl game. Um, yeah. So it should be interesting. Kedos V2. What's that? See if I can work Kedos V2 or Kedos. Everyone wants that. I I I don't know what. The, oh, you said or, or Kedos V2. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Orchid is about bolted. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Cool. Well, uh, stay tuned. MMLpro.com, guys. Anything else from the coaches before we sign off? Nope. nope. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you for co-announcing with me, Blue Max, and we are out.